for better and often, let's be honest, worse, the Nintendo Switch has become home of the ports. Whether it's hugely ambitious epics such as The Witcher 3 or even incredibly technical achievements such as the newly released Alien Isolation port, which in many ways is the best version on any console, Stranger's Wrath is among good company. And a big thanks to the developer for the review copy. It's an unusual first-person shooter come third-person action platform adventure hybrid based on the hugely popular 2D PlayStation series. Is it the good sort of mysterious stranger or the creepy guy who feeds pigeons in the park? Let's find out. Well, come and get it. Now the story goes that you're a stranger called, um, Stranger. A bounty hunter who is pretty adept at his job, but his motivations go beyond simply making vast quantities of moolah, the actual name for the currency in the game. Now as the Mandalorian has told us, bounty hunting is damn cool. And while the bounty hunting themed games over the years haven't been particularly great, while I don't want to spoil the motivations of the main character, let's just say he's got a really good reason for wanting to get all this cash. And his gravel toned monologues are short and straight to the point, but definitely out of the Duke Nukem school of voice acting. Time to do some time. He certainly doesn't sound like the brightest spark. The gameplay itself revolves around two main mechanics. The first person shooting which runs parallel to third person platform adventuring. With a sprinkling of the platforming as mentioned thrown in, now as far as the core gameplay, you'll be capturing outlaws either dead at a slight monetary hit or alive, although I never really found any real reason to capture them alive other than to challenge yourself. There's no changing of the game as you play through it, and unfortunately that mechanic feels entirely unrewarding, which is a bit of a shame. One of the more interesting aspects of the title is the interesting crossbow weapon. As a bounty hunter who prefers not to use guns, here you take a weird and wonderful set of critters, each with their own unique traits and abilities, such as the web covering variety or those which can cause enemies to run in fear or even lure them potentially to their ultimate deaths. Platform. And these are all fired from your crossbow. It's a really nice and unique touch and quite honestly I've not seen anything done like this in any game since. In the same vein then is the way you collect ammunition. Ammunition isn't infinite and this weapon will require the hunting and gathering of those named critters using the limitless ammo on offer to take them out. While this makes for an interesting distraction from the more monotonous task of dizzying and capturing alive the basic grunts, it soon gets ignored in favour of simply using melee or the default infinite ammo. Now having said this, there are a number of boss fights which require certain ammunition types, but switching on the fly between the different ammos is both clunky and a little bit irritating, and I'd often just revert to meleeing my way through it. While I opted to use the gyro aiming when in first person view, I found the hit detection on the little critters to be a touch inaccurate. Not a huge difficulty when they're in such abundance, but when the supply was shorter it does get a touch frustrating. Now the HD remake of the game features several improvements to the camera system. If you've played any games from, I don't know, the N64 era of adventure titles, then you'll remember how bad the camera used to be. The modernization and customization of X and Y axis here in both your first and third person views are welcome changes to it with the nice addition of a single button press to refocus your camera. Now this all being said, the camera can still sometimes be a touch frustrating, with the y-axis being much slower using the stick in third person that it should be, causing some very annoying camera juggling moments where you'd kind of want to use your gyro aiming because it was quicker, other than the shooting which is okay for the most part and certainly better with those gyroscopic controls, I thought the platforming sections were quite well implemented, with an easy double jump and the quick shifting to the third person making it easy to judge your distance. There are some rudimentary stealth mechanics in place, such as the game allowing you to remain hidden within tall grass, but by modern standards it may not be the most detailed of systems. It definitely reminded me of the more awkward implementation of stealth in the early Assassin's Creed titles, whereby clearly you can be seen, but just because you're in the long grass you're totally invisible. From a gameplay standpoint, 
It allows you to use your web bugs to tie enemies up quickly and then get the bounty on them. But don't expect to be working your way through many or most of the levels even using stealth as your primary option. Towns and settlements do feel surprisingly alive and allow for some downtime when not out hunting bounties. Again, it's in these moments when the game shows its age, with loading screen transitions aplenty and NPCs which loop the same dialogue lines. There are a number of boss fights throughout the game, and these range in quality as well as difficulty. And unfortunately, some of the later bosses, without spoiling anything, really didn't feel particularly well designed. And while I wouldn't say I was the best player ever, they were frustratingly difficult. The overall gameplay loop of going, collecting bounties, and trying to capture enemies alive would have been made far more fulfilling if they'd have included some sort of story-based, or even any real form of incentive-based approach towards doing in that. Now I really enjoy taking enemies in live in games if you ever played the Thief series or any of those titles that require a great deal of stealth when you have the option to go without killing it's what I like to do but not having any reward for it it just completely makes that pointless especially when doing so is more tricky. For example, you'll down an enemy, at which point the stars show around his head and you can then bounty them, but that takes a few seconds and in the meantime you'll be getting shot in the back. Now, I personally still found it more fun trying to capture enemies alive and get more money for doing so, but when there's no real avenue for that money, as it's so plentiful in the game, you can't help but feel some sort of skill-based rewards would have been better. As many small gripes and frustrations as I could find and level at the game, there's no denying that it's a great deal of fun. and despite its very old age now, it still holds up well enough. It's a quick and fluid game to play, the transition between first and third person is still quite slick, but for me it was in those moments of downtime where I enjoyed the game the most, where it really reminded me of its predecessors. And their very unique way of telling stories. If you played the original game and you absolutely loved it, well, then you're going to love this just as much. If, however, you're new to the series, then know about the quirks and the bugs because they may be potentially off-putting for some. Overall, as it stands today in 2020, I'd say gameplay receives 15 out of 20, while the controls are quite good, but not perfect. They also score 15 out of 20. Visually then, I was expecting great things judging by the eShop images, but I'm sorry, I'm a bit of a PC nerd and I'm used to looking closely at the details of a game, and to me, this is a very dated looking title. Those textures when you go close, now the overall artistic direction is excellent. And I loved the crossbow with the different critters and their unique animations and movement patterns are certainly impressive. The run animation and jump physics are okay, but there's a stark contrast between modern bump mapping and tessellated surfaces and then the flat and angular rocks, terrain and even some of the characters to some degree. What I will say though are that the cutscenes are excellent as they always have been in these games. The game still captures that thing which was so intrinsically odd world in all of the character designs and especially the strange critter based weapon. In terms of the audio, the old west twangs play out in the background with the unusual critters firing off in all directions. It all sounds decent. I thought the main protagonist's voice was a touch dull and didn't find him particularly interesting at the beginning but by the end he's cracking one liners and I started to really like him. Now that's how dukes go down. The side cast of characters are suitably unusual, and again, despite hearing the repetition in some of the voices, I thought for the most part it was decent and fitted the world perfectly. Visuals score 14 out of 20, but I enjoyed the audio a lot. That scores 16 out of 20. Now, in terms of the value, the game costs £26.99, €29.99, or $29.99, and is going to be released first digitally, and it will also have a standard boxed edition as well as a limited edition that will have some new collectibles. And it looks really likely that Microids will bring two more games to the Nintendo Switch from the Oddworld series. While I enjoy the game, I don't believe it to be nearly worth the price they're currently asking. I know it's not fair to make a direct comparison to Steam because the game was released on there a long time ago, 
but at the moment you can buy it for about six pounds or you can pay 10 pounds and it's included with many of the other games which is just much better value and at under half the price of what they're asking here i honestly don't see how anyone can justify the purchase for my money digitally this should have been around about 10 pounds perhaps going to 20 pounds for the physical copy but at the very high 26 pound 99 asking price value scores five out of 20 and it gets those five points just because it's a good game and it's a good port Overall then, Stranger's Wrath is a successful game for the most part, combining first-person shooting, a very strange and unusual reload and weapon mechanic, with some semi-decent third-person adventuring. Unfortunately, it has a number of strange quirks, and chief among them for me being the fact that there's no real reward for the player for opting to bring in your bounties alive other than cash, which you don't really need. But my major bugbear here is the price. It's a good game, but not at this price. It scores a switch up score of 65%. A big thanks to the developer for the review copy, and as always to our patrons who support us each and every month. If you'd like to join those guys, we're over 100, which is great, and I've got plans to do something nice for them this year. For all things Switch, all the time, keep it Switch up. Cheers, guys. See ya!